That did set you back a bit. <clears throat> yeah, it set me back about a year. But um, within that year, I've grown in stature, I've grown in uh, maturity. Uh, everything what happened then is all behind me. I was able to put behind me and just get on my feet and move on to something better. But if Callum Bay halted Harold's career, he also did the same to Mike McCallum. At his news conference today, though, he looked relaxed. But memories of that defeat are still fresh. He gave up his light middleweight crown for the fight, and he admits now to his mistakes. Uh, well, I made one of the biggest mistakes in my life, I think, and um, not to take anything away from, from Colum Bay. Colum Bay is a great champion, was a great champion, and a very good fighter. But uh, I think I went over there like five days before the fight, which was crazy. And um, I didn't feel good. I, I felt, felt, felt weak, like jet lag still. And um, he fought a great fight. The careers and styles of both fighters are remarkably similar. Both lost on points to Callum Bay, ruining perfect records. But how does McCallum rate Graham? Well, he's a good boxer, technical boxer. I think that's his best assets towards us, right? Seems like he move a lot. Seems like he likes to run a lot. Harold is difficult to hit. This is his party trick. In the local pubs, he does this for charity at five pounds a time. No one has hit him yet. I've always said to people for the last 10 years, they've got to have, he's got to, the, the opponent, who's McCallum, has got to be able to hit Errol. Whether he can hit him or not is another thing. Errol and myself, we've been working in the gym, we've been working for 10 years for this opportunity. It's going to be a great technical, technical, tactical fight, which I'm going to get great pleasure out of being involved in it and watching it. And uh, I've no doubt Errol's going to win. It's, it's, it's going to be hard. But uh, not hard that he's, Errol's going to get hit. It's going to be the mental pressure of the dummies' defence, the tricky parts of boxing, the technical parts of boxing. Errol's up again a fellow that was like middleweight champion, undefeated, lost one fight, and he had seven successful title defences. But uh, I've no doubt what Errol's going to do and what he's been working on, that he's going to win. Now here at a pulsating Albert Hall, the big world championship opportunity is here for Sheffield's Harold Bomber Graham. We'll join the MC, Bernard Sullivan. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the main event of the evening. This is a contest of 12 rounds, three minutes each round, to decide the WBA middleweight championship of the world. Presenting from Jamaica and New York, the former light middleweight champion of the world, Mike McCullum. And from Sheffield, England, the middleweight champion of Great Britain, Harold. Ladies and gentlemen, this match was made at 11 stone 6 pounds and at the weigh-in at the Odeon Leicester Square today, McCallum scaled 11 stone 5 pounds, Graham 11 stone 5 and 3 quarter pounds. Your referee for this contest is Mr Enzo Montero of Venezuela. Your judges, Mr. Justo Vasquez of Spain, Mr. Jesus Selle of Venezuela, and Mr. Continanza Amadeo of Italy. The World Boxing Association supervisor is Mr. Keith Arthur of Panama, and your timekeeper, Mr. Jeffrey Williams of England. And as referee Enzo Montero brings the challengers together, a word about our coverage. Because of today's industrial action, the coverage and the programme not quite as planned. No Harry Carpenter with us tonight, so no commentary, but I'll be getting the assessment of Terry Lawless between each round. Twelve rounds then for the vacant WBA World Middleweight title. Harold Graham against Jamaican Mike McCallum. We're underway. Graham in the dark shorts.
So that's round one. And it looked a pretty good one for Harold Graham. 42 fights, 41 wins, one defeat at the hands of Sumbu Kalambe, the man who's put the only blemish on the record of Mike McCallum. And Terry Lawless, what do you make of uh, Harold in that first round? Quite extraordinary, really, to see to see someone walk out with his hands on his hips all the way through the round with someone of McCullum's quality was quite extraordinary. I don't think McCullum knew quite what to do with him, but I, I don't think it's exactly the right tactics. I mean, I'd be having kittens in the corner now if I was there. He's already picked up some damage under his right eye, and I think he should take it a little bit more careful just for a few rounds. I don't, you know, he obviously tried to take the play away from McCullum in the first 30 seconds. But as I say, I certainly would be having kittens in there with him now. There's Second McCullum, out. One defeat in round his two. Uh, 36 contest. Very difficult opponent as we head into round two. So end of round two, Terry, in which we saw precisely the kind of problems that this 32-year-old Jamaican, Mike McCallum, the former world light middleweight champion, can provide, especially a couple of those body shots that we saw there. Yeah, he's a very he's a very capable guy. He looks a little slower than the last time I saw him box. He looks as if just the, the, the top edge has gone off of him. But, you know, how do you fight this guy, Graham? You can't fight a normal fight. He's so unique in his style you know i've got to go i, I don't know what i'd say to him i don't know what anybody says to him in the corner certainly seemed to catch harold there didn't he yeah he caught harold and harold knew he'd been called as well and he picked up some eye damage under the left eye as well now i, I, I can't, can't quite see how it's happening but he's certainly picking up some injuries around the face well harold's corner barney eastwood and brendan ingle certainly looking uh, a little bit concerned and maybe there's Second good reason for that as harold heads out three. for round three
what a tough round that was for Harold Graham. You would have to say, Terry, emphatically McCallum's, and Harold seemed to be hurt quite badly midway through that round. Yes, he did. That's uh, apart from the Callum Bay fight, that's the, the most serious problems I've seen him be in. I can't understand his tactics. Uh, I mean, he, he's trying to make McCallum miss, but he's not throwing enough punches. He's not countering. I mean, he shouldn't be trying to fight this guy. This fellow's a very good puncher, and he should, you know, he should be on his bike and keeping out the way. He's trying to make him miss, but he's not throwing enough counters. Harold, we know as a boxer who's elusive, opponents have this great problem of even laying a glove on him. That's not the case for McCallum tonight. Well, he's staying in distance, but he's doing nothing. I mean, I can hear Gary Mason behind shouting for Graham to hold him, and in that position, he, that's exactly what he should be doing. But I can't work out quite what he's trying to do. He's, he's certainly not boxing the normal Graham fight. He's playing into McCallum's hands Second by trying to have a fight with him. Round so a crisis hopefully survived for Harold Graham. Now round four. So four rounds gone, third distance, it really is quite enthralling stuff. How would you weigh it up at this point, Terry? Uh, it's a, a lot of it's hard to score. I, I can't, still can't make out Graham's tactics. Uh, he's, he's trying to walk into McCallum with no particular purpose in mind, it doesn't appear. McCallum is out jabbing him now, and I noticed a couple of very good shots of the body that, that appeared to catch uh, Graham and, and stop him for a second. But Harold, in reply, he's caught McCallum a couple of times, particularly after that showman stuff in the middle of the round there. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's not Graham. See, Graham's missing with so many punches. It's not his natural style to, to walk in and trade. It's to get on his bike and move a bit. And he doesn't appear to be doing that tonight. So that's McCallum who's made a good start, hasn't he? Yeah, very good start. And I noticed that, that Eddie Futch in the corner there looked very con content with uh, what he saw in that round. Second out, round five.
Callum down a slip. He's taking a count, Terry. Surprise, I thought it was a slip. Would you have that as a slip, Terry? I thought it was a slip. I thought he slipped on the, the water in the corner there. So Harrell certainly in a mood to entertain. Mike McCallum uh, on the deck in that round, Terry. We thought it was a slip, but uh, he certainly took account. Maybe we could take another look at that. But Harrell really in almost an overconfident mood. I'm, I, I know that concerns you. Actually, it was a much better round for him that round. He, he, he did what he does best. You know, he, he made McCullum miss and, and he got McCullum frustrated. He didn't, he broke the rules once or twice and got behind his back. But that's what he needs to do. He needs to unsettle McCullum. Well, he was unsettled in the opening seconds here. Let's take another look at this and see what you make of it, looking at it a second time. Well, he got caught over the shoulder, but it's obvious that his foot was stuck in that water there and, he, and his foot stretched out to put him down. He certainly wasn't hurt. But that's what Graham's got to keep doing now. He's got to keep, he's got to frustrate McCullum and make him miss Second and out. get out of puff round himself. Six. I'd still like to see his hands up a little bit more though. So round six, things may be looking a little better for Harold Graham.
the big crowd here at the Albert Hall certainly getting behind a virtuoso performance in many respects from Harold Graham. But halfway point, Terry, I know it's difficult to score, as you've already said, but I must ask, who would you have ahead at this point? I would think possibly after that round, Graham's just gone slightly. It's very difficult to score the fight, but I was quite impressed with Graham in that round because he did everything wrong. He stayed close with, with McCullum, which where he shouldn't be, but seemed to be succeeding. And I, he looked, just looked a little bit frustrated there, McCullum. I, th I thought Graham did very good with that close quarter in. And this is how Harold really increased the frustration. He, he came out of this and uh, was in a mood to throw a couple of quite decent rights after this, Harold. Well, what's been incredible is for, for the, the whole of the fight, they've been long distance, and suddenly for the whole of this round, they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with their heads on one another's shoulders. Harold has got this ability to switch tactics. He's got so much in his armory. Second down. Well, he certainly confused me. I guess he must be confusing McCallum. So we're into the second half of the fight. Maybe Harold Graham slightly ahead. We're in round seven. another round in which Harold really set out to try and be as elusive as possible and increase the frustration and he got caught right at the end there yeah he's, he's like a guy walking a tightrope with, with no net underneath him I can't, I can't believe that he can drop your hands in front of a good puncher like McCallum like that I don't see the, the need to do it I mean he takes him that, that pinning on the ropes there it's, uh, you know I mean I know he's got his unique style but God it's taking chances there he shook his head there as if to tell McCallum, you haven't hurt me, but I think it did shake him a bit. Well, you can't keep taking those punches. I mean, he, he looks he looks as if he's completely in control of himself. He's just, he just does strange things, I suppose you'd say. I mean, it is, I've never seen a style like it. I've watched him for years, and I've never seen anybody fight like, like Errol Graham. But McCallum must be very encouraged by the knowledge that he can catch him now. Second down. Um, I think, I think uh, McCallum is tiring slightly himself now, though. He's, he's, he's pulling on a bit of air now. 
Okay, we're into round eight. Once again, a round in which Harold Graham made the pretty patterns around the ring, but I get the feeling it was McCallum scoring the points. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not doing quite enough positive work, um, and he obviously cost himself a point there. I mean, I know he needs to frustrate McCallum, but he's got away with that. that I think it was the third time he's, he's done that during the yeah, fight. Yeah, he took a warning there. We can see uh, the incident once again. Just explain the damage that this has done to uh, Harold's prospects. Well, uh, if it was... Uh, if McCallum won the round, then he'd probably make it a two-point round. This, I mean, I'd love to look at the, the judges' scorecards now because it's a very difficult fight to score. Depends on what you're looking for. Uh, Graham's throwing a lot of punches, missing a lot of punches. Uh, he's making McCallum miss, but McCallum seems to be throwing the more uh, better score and punches. Very difficult fight to score. Very intriguing, but very difficult. A lot of heated discussion in that corner, particularly from Brendan Second Eagle. Out. Mike Round McCallum, nine. very composed, 32 years old, based in New York. Harold Graham boxing out of Sheffield. And we're nearing the closing rounds of this world title fight.
so another terrific round which has brought this Albert Hall crowd to its feet. A lot of boxing by instinct out there. And these two men really know they're in as tough a fight as they've ever been in. Well, uh, Errol got himself in terrible trouble there with, with his hands low and his head high. Um, and he got caught with far too many punches during that, the course of that round for Errol Graham. You know, I've never seen him get caught with so many punches during the course of a round. I don't know if we're going to see it now. There's a lot of head banging going on there. But he's still in there. He's surviving. But he's got this terrific support behind him. Saying that, at the end of the round, it, it almost looked as if McCullum had punched himself out on Graham. That's right. It was a, quite an extraordinary fight. In fact, there was a hint of desperation on both faces at the end of that round. I should think tiredness on both faces now. I think there's a lot of work to be done in those corners. Well, that might take its toll on the 32-year-old, the older of the two. Round Harold ten. Graham in the dark shorts, the challenger from Sheffield, England. Mike McCullum in the light shorts from Jamaica, based in New York. And the contest is for the vacant WBA middleweight title. And we're in round 10. of round 10 of 12 and it looks to me Terry that uh, Harold is looking very tired indeed yeah it's extremely tired I must say to his credit there he took a punch very low right as the bell yeah. went and he never complained to the referee but he he does look tired he's getting very badly marked around the eyes now um, and he's got to really pull it out I think these next couple of rounds McCallum looks awesomely fresh and it's Harold with the work to do correct
So Harrell heads back to his stool. The two men head back to their stools at the end of round 11. And without playing down the very notable courage that Harrell is showing at this point, would you say it's McCallum ahead? Yes, I would say he's ahead. Um, I must, I'm just watching the corner now. I've got to give them credit in the corner, in Graham's corner. They've done a tremendous job with the lumps and bumps around his eye. I don't know if it's what's showing on the screen, but he is, he's, he's suffered quite a bit of uh, you know, damage around the eyes, and they've kept it able to see. It's very easy to close those eyes up, and they've kept them down. And that damage came quite early, didn't very it? Very, it's been going on all the way through the fight. It's been a very rough fight. There's been a lot of, as I said before, a lot of head banging and elbow use all the way through the fight. It's been a professionals only type fight. But he looks extremely tired now, Errol. He's, he's, he's fighting a lot on guts now. There's McCallum. Any hint of tiredness about that face? Well, fatigue, I suppose, but he, he certainly looks in a lot better shape than Errol Second does. out, 12th and last round. So the last three minutes of Harold Graham's pursuit of a world title that's been his ambition for so long. And what a fight this has been. Last round of 12. of a truly outstanding fight and what a reception from this Albert Hall crowd McCallum feels he's won it and Harrell has given absolutely everything for his supporters many of them came down from Yorkshire from Sheffield they've been rewarded with a tremendously gutsy performance from Harold Graham but I wonder Terry is it enough well, he, he certainly, you've got, you've got to give him his due. He, he tried with every ounce that he had in his body. You know, I bet he needs that lift up there now. You know, he's, he's given everything he's got in his body. I personally don't think it's enough, but I hope it is. It has to be said that really both men looked out on their feet at the end, and one of the swinging punches from Harold just could have found its mark. Well, it may not have looked as tough a fight as it actually was. It was an extremely tough fight, very physical, um, 
the mental side was very tough because a very lot of you know good sharp thinking going on in there one trying to unsettle the other one and vice versa um, and I'm sure that they're they're two very extremely tired fighters now and everyone who worked in that Harold Graham corner can be proud of what their man did tonight Barney Eastwood Brendan Ingle Really, we've been talking about a world title fight for, what, about the last eight years in terms of Harold Graham. He wasn't going to waste the opportunity. No, he, he certainly gave everything. Um, I'm very interested to hear the scoring because, it's, you know, I've seen funny decisions all around the world, funny scores all around the world, and I have a feeling we're going to have a, a lot of difference in scoring here. The judges tonight from Spain, from Venezuela, and from Italy. And the referee Enzo Montero from Venezuela. Very nervous moments. Mike McCallum has been a world champion before. He's held the WBA World Light Middleweight title in 1984. He relinquished that when he moved up to the uh, middleweight level, struggling to make the 11 stone limit, just like Harold Graham. And in fact, their careers have followed very similar paths, but there's certainly going to be some kind of divergence tonight I think from the look on the faces I think that McCullum has won the fight I think they're very happy the corner certainly most of the opinion around the ringside here shares that what an incredible man Mr. Eddie Futchers he seems to be in more world championship corners than my lords ladies and gentlemen we have a split decision As follows, Judge Sellis scores 117 for Graham, 114 for McCallum. <laughs> Judge Vasquez, 115 for Graham, 117 for McCallum. <laughs> Judge Amadeo scores 114 for Graham, 115 for McCullum. Agonizingly the close to And new WBA middleweight champion of the world is Mike McCullum. So Mike McCullum makes it on that narrowest of all split decisions. And the expression on Harold Graham's face really says it all. Well, I thought we'd have some odd scores, and I think that summed it up. We certainly did have some odd scores. Uh, I, I personally thought he won it just by a little more than that. But I must give Graham his credit. He, he really tried with everything he had there tonight. Harold Graham. Well tried. Well done, both men. Deserve reception for Graham and for both men. Has to be asked now, Terry, what now for Harold, would you say? Well, I can just hear Barney Eastwood saying to McCullum there'll be another time so perhaps he's got ideas of making a return I hope he is um, it's a, always a, a, you know, when someone's been around as long as Errol and you lose a world championship fight by I guess well that's one point uh, it must be very hard to get back in the gym and get back to you know starting you know, from a long way down the hill again but, but then again the narrowness of that defeat would encourage you to achieve what you know you can be capable of well, if you were asking me would I buy a ticket to come and see a return, yes, I would. I think most of the people in the hall tonight would as well.